I have been growing the same variety of squash in the gardens for quite a few years, one that grows quite well in the relatively cool summers of Ireland. The climate here is not great for this heat-loving plant, but this variety has a decent reputation for producing delicious squash in cool climates, if they have just enough warmth to mature. But I've been wanting to try to find other varieties that also produce well, and to explore the diversity of types, sizes, and tastes that are possible with squash and pumpkins. So this year we grew a few plants of another variety that was highly recommended by a few people. It grew well, but by harvest time it was obvious that there was something wrong, with quite different looking squash in the patch, which seems to be the result of an accidental cross-pollination. I have grown a few other squash varieties in the past, but I usually rely on the hybrid variety called Crown Prince, which has a good reputation for being able to produce a good crop in this part of the world. I really like these distinctive grey coloured squash, which typically weigh between 3 and 4 kilograms, that have really dense orange flesh inside with really rich flavour. Or that is the case with a fruit that has had enough time and warmth to mature properly, something that isn't always possible in the Midlands of Ireland. I have wanted to try growing others, and over the past few years I've collected seeds from quite a few different varieties and finally got a chance to do a variety trial this year. But I also wanted to include the Delicata variety, which a few people had recommended to me, which apparently has a great taste, a bit like sweet potatoes, with a thin edible skin. This sounded like a good complement to the Crown Prince variety, and although I had trouble finding these seeds from my usual suppliers, I was able to buy a one seed packet from a supplier that I normally don't buy from. And because it was so highly recommended, I replaced four of the squash plants that are usually grown in the simple garden with this Delicata variety, sharing the large bed with four plants of the Crown Prince variety. This was a lot of space to give over to a variety I had not tried before, and it ended up being a mistake, but more because of the quality of the seed rather than the variety itself. I wasn't really paying close enough attention to the growth of these plants during the summer, but they all seemed to have similar leaves and growth habit, though one plant may have been affected by downy mildew earlier than the others. Looking at the squash fruit growing under the leaves, I did notice that there was differences between them, but I thought this might be differences in development or stages. But when the leaves died back, there were obvious differences in the huge number of squash that were produced. There were quite a few dark green squash, which stood out the most, though I initially thought they were unripe, but I noticed that they were all coming from the same vine leading from one of the four plants. This was an obvious issue, and I thought it might have been the rogue mutation within the genetics of the variety. But looking at all the other squash, there was not the usual consistency that I would expect from a refined variety. And when we harvested them all and placed them beside each other to cure in one of the polytunnels, it was fairly obvious that the variations could be grouped together. There were a few that I wasn't sure about, but I was able to divide all the squash into four different types, matching the four plants. I wish that we had traced all of the vines and separated out all the squash that grew from each plant, as I suspect most of the squash that I placed in each group would have come from one of the plants. Another grower who happened to be visiting the gardens recently had a fair amount of experience with the Delicata variety, and confirmed that they normally don't look like most of the squash that I harvested, though some of them were quite close. And they confirmed that the skin was normally very thin on the Delicata squash they grew, but some of the squash I had harvested had really hard skin. So although one of the sets of squash was close to what Delicata normally looks like, the rest seemed to be significant variations, and I can only assume that this was due to cross-pollination of the flowers that produced the original seeds that I bought. There are four different species of squash or pumpkins, uh, which apparently don't normally cross-pollinate with each other. And the Delicata variety belongs to the Pepo type, which also includes the courgettes and zucchinis, the spaghetti squash, and acorn squash. And I think that there may have been an accidental cross-pollination with an acorn squash variety. The dark green skin with an orange patch where the squash touched the soil is characteristic of some acorn squash, and they also have much harder skin. And the taste of some of these squash remind me of the flavour and texture of acorn squash, though I have not tried Delicata squash before, so I don't know how it compares. Normally different squash or pumpkin varieties are separated by considerable distances when they're grown for seed saving, but perhaps in this case there just wasn't enough distance and there was a fair amount of cross-pollination. 
Or perhaps even one bee picked up pollen from a male flower of an acorn squash and flew a long distance before it deposited the pollen on one female flower of a delicata squash plant. And that one flower produced one fruit containing many seeds, each one containing the genetics of a different grain of pollen. And some of these seeds ended up in the seed packet that I bought. Apparently a cross-pollination like this does not produce a consistent or equal merge between the two parent varieties, but instead produces a diverse range of genetic possibilities. With each seed producing a different variation of a wide range of combinations between these two parent plants, undoing years of efforts by the plant breeders who created and refined this variety to be consistent, and this seems to match what was produced by these four plants. The smaller and darker squash from the one plant are the most similar to an acorn squash variety, with a similar dark green color and an orange patch where it was touching the ground. These squash are smaller than the others with pear-like shape and are slightly less ribbed with significantly darker flesh inside, and the plants produce fewer squash than the others. The next set is very different, including longer and more irregularly shaped squash with a deeper yellow skin and dark green stripes or grooves that are typical of the Delicata variety. But they also have more pronounced bumps on the surface. The skin of these squash is extremely hard, much thicker than any other squash I've ever come across, and very different from the thin edible skin of the Delicata squash are famous for. The third set seemed to be most similar to the Delicata type, with a fairly consistent long shape, size and colors that are typical of the variety. The skin is quite thin, and as far as I can tell, the flesh and inner cavity are similar to what I would expect from this variety, and I suspect that these squash came from seeds that were not cross-pollinated. The fourth set seemed fairly similar to the original variety with thin skin and similar colors. But the flesh was a bit more pale and the squash was consistently bigger with a definite pear shape rather than the consistent elongated shape of the variety. And there was an interesting change in color within the darker banding on the surface where the stripes changed from green to orange in a definite pattern across the surface of the squash. It was only the seeds of the dark skinned squash from the first plant that seemed mature, with the hard seed casing already developed, compared to the softer pliable skin of the seeds from the other sets. And this faster maturing of the plant would be another divergence caused by this cross-pollination. And this possible later ripening of the other plants would indicate that perhaps this delicata variety is not so successful in this climate, especially if they were not able to produce mature squash in a season that was unusually warm. But this is a small sample size and I would need to cut open a lot more squash to really compare them. And the not so ripe squash from three of the plants will likely not taste as good as they could and may not have that characteristic sweet potato flavor that the Delicata variety is well known for. I roasted a sample of each and the darker green skin squash was the best with a richer flavor and the skin was still thin enough to eat. And the really hard skin second type was not good at all, with very little to actually eat with such a thick skin. The other two were nice enough, but I was not overly impressed by the flavor of either of them. But I suspect that that was because they were not ripe enough, and I didn't get that much of a sweet potato flavor off of any of them. So, apart from the hard skin squash, which I'll probably just chop up and compost, all of the other ones were edible and quite enjoyable, though I think I prefer the green skin version. Unfortunately, I still don't know what the true Delicata variety is like, and I cannot expect to be able to get any of the same variations that I got this year if I grow the rest of the seed pack next year. Even if I save the seeds from the dark green type that I liked, it will likely take a lot of space and years of controlled back cross pollination to develop a new stable variety that consistently produce squash similar to what this one plant produced. Keeping a variety stable so that it produces as expected year after year apparently takes a lot of effort and very controlled pollination, as well as removing any rogue plants that appear with different characteristics. I came across this one other time a few years ago with a batch of carrot seeds of a very common variety from a mainstream supplier, where quite a few of the carrots that were produced didn't look or taste like that variety. There was quite a range of colors and root shapes, with some of them a very pale yellow that had a poor taste and more fibrous texture. And other growers at the time were complaining of the same issue, growing seeds of the same carrot variety from the same mainstream supplier. And I noticed similar issues with seeds from the same variety that I bought several years later. 
I suspect in that case a few rogue plants with undesirable characteristics were not spotted in the group of plants that were used for seed saving, which can apparently happen with even very stable varieties. In the case of the squash I grew this year, I suspect it was a simple cross-pollination with another variety of squash, and I unfortunately ended up with some of those problematic seeds. So, unless I want to take on the role of a plant breeder, this has been a interesting but disappointing accident, which further delays my efforts to find another squash variety that I can rely on. But I am glad that I planted four of these plants, because if I had only included it in the broader variety trial, where I only grew one plant of each variety, I would not have noticed this issue. I could have dismissed this delicata variety based on one plant from cross-pollinated seed, and I wonder if any of the other squash varieties that I'm growing could have similar issues. This is all another cautionary tale about some of the issues with seed saving, and being able to get seeds that will produce what I want that I can rely on. If I was just growing for myself, this is not so much of an issue and could actually be quite an interesting exploration, but for commercial growers, uh, cross-pollinated seed can lead to a serious loss of income. And this experience has caused me to realize that I need to be even more cautious with the seed saving I do, especially with vegetables that rely on cross-pollination by insects or wind. An accidental cross with another variety or failing to spot a plant that is off type could mean that I lose the special characteristics of a variety that I wanted to keep. For next year, I will need to find another supply of these delicata squash seeds, and hopefully this batch will produce what they're supposed to. And we will be able to harvest lots of really delicious squash that fully ripen in this climate, or find another variety that does. I really don't know if this cross-pollination is an isolated issue with only a few seeds that a few of us ended up with, or if it's a much more widespread problem. I don't even know where the original seed came from, as I bought it from a reseller who simply repackaged seed that they bought in bulk, probably from a larger supplier elsewhere in Europe. This is another reason to focus more on saving my own seeds, and to develop the skills and procedures to ensure that the seeds that I save are true to the variety that I want to keep which is an interesting thing to explore as part of this Red Gardens project. If you'd like to support our work and this YouTube channel so that we can continue with these kinds of explorations and many more, please check out the links to Patreon and PayPal, either on screen or in the description below. Thanks to all of you who have already contributed to help keep this project going over all these years, and to everyone who likes, shares, and comments on all these videos. But most importantly, thank you for watching.